Imagine we have a light bulb and a switch that turns the state of the light on or off. If we turn the light on, we can denote that state as one. If the light bulb is off, we can represent the state as zero. Now imagine eight light bulbs and switches. That represents eight bits with a state of zero or one. Let's backtrack to the punch cards that were used in Jacquard's loom. Remember that the loom used cards with holes in them. When the loom would reach a hole, it would hook the thread underneath, meaning that the loom was on. If there wasn't a hole, it would not hook the thread, so it was off. This is a foundational binary concept. By utilizing the two states of on or off, Jacquard was able to weave intricate patterns into fabric with his looms. Then the industry started refining the punch cards a little more. If there was a hole, the computer would read one. If there wasn't a hole, it would read zero. Then by just translating the combination of zeros and ones, a computer could calculate any possible amount of numbers. Binary in today's computer isn't done by reading holes. It uses electricity via transistors, allowing electrical signals to pass through. If there's an electric voltage, we would denote it as one. If there isn't, we would denote it by zero. But just having transistors isn't enough for our computer to be able to do complex tasks. Imagine if you had two light switches on opposite ends of a room, each controlling a light in the room. What if when you went to turn on the light with one switch, the other switch wouldn't turn off? That would be a very poorly designed room. Both switches should either turn the light on or off, depending on the state of the light. Fortunately, we have something known as logic gates. Logic gates allow our transistors to do more complex tasks like decide where to send electrical signals depending on logical conditions. It's important that you understand how computers count in binary. We've shown you simple lookup tables that you can use like the ASCII to binary table. But as an IT support specialist, whether you're working on networking or security, you'll need to know how binary works. The binary system is how our computers count using ones and zeros. But humans don't count like that. When you were a child, you may have counted using 10 fingers on your hand. That innate counting system is called the decimal form or base 10 system. In the decimal system, there are 10 possible numbers you can use ranging from zero to nine. When we count binary, which only uses zero and one, we convert it to a system that we can understand, decimal. 330, 250, 2, 40, 4 million. They're all decimal numbers. We use the decimal system to help us figure out what bits our computer can use. We can represent any number in existence just by using bits. That's right, we can represent this number just using ones and zeros. So how does that work? Let's consider these numbers. 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. What patterns do you see? Hopefully you'll see that each number is a double of the previous number going right to left. What happens if you add them all up? You get 255. That's kind of weird. I thought we could have 256 values for a byte. Well, we do. The zero is counted as a value, so the maximum decibel number you can have is 255. What do you think the number is represented here? See where the ones and the zeros are represented? Remember, if our computer sees a one, then the value is on. If it sees a zero, then the value is off. If you add these numbers up, you'll get a decimal value. If you guess 10, then you're right, good job. If you didn't get it, that's okay too. Take another look. The two and eight are on, and if we add them up, we get 10. Let's look at our ask you to binary table again. The letter H in binary is 0110100. Now let's look at an ASCII to decimal table. The letter H in decimal is 104. Now let's try our conversion chart again. 64 plus 32 plus eight equals 104. Look at that, the math checks out. Now we're cooking.